What's up everyone, Big Dan here. Last week I posted a video discussing the most compelling reasons why you should turn Sebastian in and get him expelled from Hogwarts. In this video, let's argue the opposite side of the case and discuss why Sebastian was right to use the dark arts to save Anne and why we shouldn't snitch on him after he kills his uncle. Keep watching to see it all. We do have a choice. What good will it do to turn him in now? Sebastian's sister Anne is the victim of a powerful curse that causes debilitating pain and will eventually take her life. Anne has visited every healer known to man and no one has been able to cure her. At this point, everyone except Sebastian has given up all hope that Anne can be cured. There is no cure! From Sebastian's perspective, if there are potential cures available through forbidden magic, then why not explore those options? And so Sebastian embarks on a journey into ancient tomes and forgotten catacombs in search of anything that might help his sister. I tend to agree with Sebastian that the Dark Arts label is arbitrary. If a particular form of magic is being used for good, then is it still a dark art? Should certain forms of magic be forbidden and made illegal just because of the potential for evil? What's the difference between killing an enemy with incendio and one-shotting them with a killing curse? At the end of the day, magic is just a tool like any other. Sebastian's uncle Solomon seems to believe that all dark magic is bad and cringe. Even if you use a spell like Imperio to save your sister from certain death, it's still unforgivable. So I guess just let her die then? Or maybe use Levioso instead? I mean, what's the big deal, bro? You've gone too far, Sebastian. Stay away from her. It turns out that Solomon's aversion to the dark arts may be rooted in personal experience, as Sebastian explains to us midway through the questline. Do you think your uncle would tell anyone at the ministry about all of this if he found out? If he found out, I doubt he'd go to the ministry. He didn't part ways with them well from what I understand. He won't say, but I believe his strong aversion to dark magic has something to do with his time there. Anne thinks he once decided to fight fire with fire, so to speak, and resorted to using an unforgivable curse and fight against dark wizards. At least that's what she thought she heard. When he realized what his job had led him to become, he left rather abruptly. So, I'm not sure he'd go to the ministry to report on his own family using dark magic now. Translation, Solomon was a little bitch who couldn't handle using the fun spells, and now he doesn't want anyone else to have fun either. As Sebastian continues to explore the dark arts, Solomon threatens to snitch on him as well as the player character. This family does not resort to using dark magic even against our enemies. What Sebastian did cannot be undone. If I hear that either of you continues down this path, if either of you uses dark magic, I will notify the headmaster immediately. Way to be a buzzkill. Another point against snitching on Sebastian is that Sebastian has been a real homie for the entire game. He is the only student who teaches us any spells at all. And he gives us the good stuff. Disillusionment, Confringo, Crucio, Imperio, and of course, Avada Kedavra. On top of that, Sebastian didn't snitch on us when Peeves ratted us out for sneaking into the restricted section of the library. Peeves informs me that you didn't come alone tonight. If someone has coerced you, I would have you tell me. You're a bright boy. Don't waste this. There was nobody else. I came alone. Throughout this whole questline, Sebastian's best friend and Slytherin housemate, Ominous, acts like a complete soy boy, begging Sebastian to steer clear of dark magic. If you cast Crucio, you will regret it forever. What's the deal, Ominous? Just because your parents liked to cast torture curses on unarmed civilians and forced you to do the same? That makes all dark arts bad now? Come on, bro. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. The situation eventually boils over once Sebastian taps into the power of the relic you discovered in the Feldcroft catacombs. 
Anne and Ominous are mortified to discover that Sebastian has managed to summon and control some Inferi. But hey, a little necromancy has never hurt anyone, has it? Before you know it, Solomon busts into the catacomb like an absolute Karen, asking to speak to the manager. He accios the relic from Sebastian's hands and destroys it, causing all the zombies to attack you and Sebastian. Then Solomon attacks you as well. It's like, hello, how about helping us fight off the angry zombies first? Then maybe we could talk this out. Solomon is such a raging asshole the whole game that I truly enjoy casting Crucio and fire spells on him throughout the fight. It's very cathartic. Ultimately, Sebastian and the player are acting in self-defense here. And in my opinion, Solomon is completely out of line in his actions throughout this entire questline. I think Sebastian puts it best when he yells out, you were supposed to protect us. So when Sebastian inevitably lights Solomon up, cueing the world's tiniest violin, I honestly don't feel bad for the guy. After the debacle in the catacomb, Ominous will ask if you should turn Sebastian in to Professor Black. And to that I say, nah fam, Sebastian is a real homie, and real homies don't snitch. We do have a choice. What good will it do to turn him in now? He clearly regrets everything. He's not going to do anything like this again. We've both heard that before. But we also need to think about Anne. She's lost her health, now she's lost her uncle. Do you really want to take her brother away from her too? I, I understand what you're saying. Perhaps you're right. As much as I believe that Sebastian should pay for his actions, we'd only be punishing Anne as well. I hope we're doing the right thing. I'll talk to Anne. If it comes from me, she'll agree with this decision. Thank you, Ominous. You're a good friend. If you keep Sebastian's secret, you'll have a chance to speak with him at the end of the game. During this conversation, you'll reveal that Anne was cursed by the dark magician Victor Rookwood, not a goblin like he thought all along. This causes Sebastian's viewpoint on goblins to shift in a more tolerable direction. It was Rookwood all along. This, this can't be. It was the loyalists. It's always been them. The night Anne was cursed, all she saw were goblins. Once Rookwood allied with Ranrock, Isadora's estate became of interest to them both. That's why Rookwood was there the night Anne was cursed. He was working with Ranrock. When he saw your sister, well, he didn't want anyone to know. So he cursed her, and she's never been the same. So cruel. Rookwood deserved what he got. Thank you for telling me. It wasn't a goblin. I suppose I owe you an apology. All this time I thought goblins were the enemy, but it was never that simple. On the other hand, had you snitched on Sebastian, then he would continue to hate goblins as well as wizards. Were you able to tell Sebastian about Rookwood cursing Anne? I was. Black let me talk to Sebastian before he left. At first he wouldn't believe it. Then he realized it all made sense. Unfortunately, his anger only grew towards goblins and dark wizards. In time, perhaps Anne will learn to forgive Sebastian for what he did to their uncle. And hey, if she doesn't, then just give him the classic Tim Dillon advice. Cancel your family. So there you have it. Why Sebastian was right to use the dark arts to save Anne, and why you shouldn't snitch on him in Hogwarts Legacy. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Hogwarts Legacy and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.